Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. We will toss over to Sumera, who is in the mutual fund corner, to answer all your mutual fund related queries. Mangalam, thanks very much for that. And joining me this afternoon, I have Harshwardhan Rungta of Rungta Securities, who will be answering all the queries that are being sent in by our viewers, and there are quite a few. Harsh, good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining in. Let's get cracking right away. So our first caller is Charmi Doshi, who's on the line with us from Mumbai. And she, in fact, has SIPs going on in multiple uh, funds simultaneously. So she's looking to have her portfolio as uh, assessed. Charmi, hi, good afternoon. How can we help you? Hi, th good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking up my query. So, no like uh, I had mentioned, I have some, uh, so these are the ones that I plan to invest, five mutual funds. And mm -hmm. I've tried to spread it across uh, emerging funds, large cap, ELSS, which have some large cap and mid cap components. All I wanted to know is, is this like a good portfolio? So, and uh, uh, about time frame. So, right now I have no exit time frame in mind. So, like, I mm -hmm. can keep going on in them until maybe like you know for four or five years or maybe even more than that so time is not an issue for me so all i wanted to know is, is the allocation like i try to put in different fund houses and different kinds of schemes i just wanted one opinion on whether it's to go and should i just start them or is there any other modification which should be made in this portfolio Okay, Charmi, I want to start off by congratulating you because you're only 22, but you have taken a very, very practical approach to investing. The primary thing, of course, is to invest as early as possible. And at 22, uh, you couldn't have done anything better. Also, your portfolio is looking quite strong, actually, but I'm going to leave it to the expert, Harsh, to actually uh, analyze that. Harsh, she wants to m build a certain portfolio, which she has laid out for us. You've had a chance to look at it. How would you analyze it? So, well, Sumaira, uh, you know, the, at the first instance, not often do you come across investors yeah. who've, uh, you know, correctly allocated within the large cap, mid cap, the tax saving schemes. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, she's even gone and, uh, you know, she's removed as to what is the actual allocation of a particular scheme in the large cap category in the mid cap. So, I think overall, she's done a really good job, I mean, to begin with. And, uh, you know, Charmi, if you're starting off with such kind of research, I'm reasonably sure you'll do very well for yourself in the investment world at least. So, uh, you know, besides the fact looking at your portfolio, well, you can definitely go ahead and start investing into these schemes as you've selected. Your question was that should I, uh, you know, invest a 40,000 in just five schemes? Yes, of course, you can do that because there's an uh, adequate uh, diversification which you need to take in. In addition to that, you seem to be somebody who could be seriously watching your portfolio. You can track it. So in that context, I would recommend that you can also look at direct options. So within mutual funds, when you make an investment, there is one, uh, like you've uh, taken a scheme, which is Aditya Birla Tax Relief 96. So there is a regular plan and there is a direct plan. And direct plan is for those investors who can uh, basically manage the portfolio on their own and they're quite uh, knowledgeable to do so. You seem to be the kind who fits into that profile. So I recommend that you look at even direct options because the fund management cost on a direct plan is far lesser than what it would be on a regular. So that translates into direct saving for you. So you could possibly look at that option and begin with your investments in the schemes that you've already shortlisted. Uh, Charmi, I have a question for you. Um, are you an investment professional? Uh, hey, I'm working in the investor relations team for uh, one of the other Birla Group companies. And I okay. am a chartered accountant, so yeah, that sums up. All right, so that it's solves the, the mystery right, okay. for us, but uh, good going. And uh, I hope this helps you in your uh, financial investments journey as well. All right, up next, we have a query coming in from Hari Shankar, who writes to us. Uh, he wants to know if he should move his investment, which is currently in the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund, to a small cap fund. Um, now, I wish we had Hari on the phone with us, Harsh, because I'm sure we have a lot of questions as to why this sudden decision of his. Uh, but the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund itself, uh, you know, I was just seeing uh, the uh, performance actually over uh, the short term. Over the last two quarters, it's number two in its category, which is not too bad to say the least. Least. Um, therefore, how would you assess his investment in Axis Long Term Equity Fund and is a move warranted to a small cap fund? Uh, not really. So, as you said, there, you know, I wish we had him online. So, because mm -hmm. there were a lot of things that we would need to know. So, to begin with, if you're looking at an Axis Long Term Equity Fund, well, the, uh, you know, quite certainly this is an ELSS scheme yeah. which helps you save tax under Section 80C. And the allocation within this scheme is about 70% in large caps. 
So the question is, uh, and, and, and as, as you said, the scheme is a good performer in his own category. So there is no you know, kind of reason wherein you would want to move out of a tax saving scheme uh, in which you started investing with a primary objective to save tax and also get the long term benefits of equity investments. Now from this, you would suddenly move uh, and you know, think of allocating money towards a small cap fund. Well, I'm reasonably sure you are you know, kind of uh, looking at the returns that small cap funds have given in the last two years. But that really isn't a driving force in selecting the kind of scheme that you should be investing in. So my recommendation is do not just look at uh, past performance of a particular category. Maybe a mid and small cap category over the last two years would look very attractive. But that does not mean that they will continue to give the same kind of returns in future. In fact, we've seen in the last couple of months, the mid and the small cap category have taken a huge beating as well. So stick to your goals, stick to the objective, which is tax saving and equity investments, access uh, long-term equity fund within that category is a good performer and you can certainly continue with it. Do not try and just look at past returns and try and move around with your uh, portfolio. All right, up next we have Vijay Bhatt who writes to us on Facebook. He wants to know uh, what is Harshvardhan's take on the Axis mid-cap fund. Now this looks like a pretty interesting question actually, uh, Harsh, because uh, in its category currently it's the best performing fund, right? Uh, now there are two questions that arise from this. One is that, uh, you know, as you check over the longer period, like if I see a five-year period, the rank drops drastically to almost 25, 30 uh, uh, range. Also, has the time come to start looking at uh, mid-cap mutual funds again? Uh, so, well, so there are two things. As you said, the first part is when you look at a performance of a scheme, so they would, there would be a period which is, say, two years. So, Axis mid-cap yeah. you know, is almost the top performer in the last two years category. You also have to evaluate the mid-cap segment by itself. The, sec uh, yeah. the, uh, the mid-cap space by itself has got a very good return in that last two mm. years. So, maybe they've just done well when the markets were going mm. up and the mid-cap mid stocks were going up. What you need to do in a mid-cap category particularly is the, you know, the fund management skills. What happens in the mid-cap space is you know, particularly that you need to really look at a fund which has got a stable and a consistent performance over a longer period of time. When they've seen the bear phases, when they've seen the you know, bull phases, they have to see all those phases because mid-cap is all about stock selection and the fund management skills will actually you know, start playing around when the markets are not even going to do well. So in that category, I would suggest that there are two other funds which have been in existence for a far longer period of time and they have been a very good consistent performance. So an HDFC Mid-Cap Opportunities Fund and a Franklin India Prima Fund. Now these have been in existence for a very long time. They've seen all the different market cycles. So it is advisable that you pick a scheme within these two uh, options that I'm suggesting. The second question that you had was, uh, should investors start looking at Mid-Cap again? So, well, uh, last couple of months have been very painful for the mid-cap yeah. So, mm -hmm. So, there's no doubt on that part. The question is, there would be certain allocation to mid-caps. There is no doubt mm -hmm. on that. Whenever you're creating a portfolio, you never, you know, you, how do you create a portfolio? You look at, you know, what should be a core uh, section of your portfolio, mm -hmm. which could be large cap companies. So, maybe 50 or 60 percent you will invest into large caps. 20, 30 percent you will allocate to mid-caps because a mid-cap has the mm -hmm. potential to become a large cap. So you would want to expose yourself to that as well. So yes, you can have a certain allocation to mid-caps, but restrict that to about 20-30% so that the core portion of the portfolio is actually with the blue chip companies. All right, so Vijay, I hope that answers your query. Up next, Anish Divani has written to us. He wants to start investing in a balanced mutual fund and wants to know the top five balanced funds with their past returns. So, Anish, two parts to your question. One is that, uh, uh, you know, what is uh, the idea per se as regard to investing in balanced funds? And secondly, uh, if you're just looking at a list of top five with returns, I think there are plenty of uh, uh, forums available online where you'll find, uh, uh, you know, the list on various parameters, of course, performance being one on them. Uh, but uh, uh, Harshwadhan, to his first query, which is uh, that, you know, he's 35 years old, he's prof a professional. His question is that he wants to start investing in a balanced mutual fund because he is looking at 50% exposure to equity and 50% exposure to debt. Now, balanced funds technically don't meet the exact criteria, which is 50-50. It's more like 60-40 uh, almost all the time. Um, is this something that you would recommend uh, to him that he go in for a balanced fund? I mean, this is assuming that all his other needs are met uh, through the rest of his portfolio. Yeah, so if you just look at uh, Nisha's query, he also says that he has never invested in mutual funds earlier. Mm. And uh, he wants to start investing. 
and it is understandable for a new investor who comes into say probably equity and even mutual funds to think that I want to divide my money equally so that and that's usually a suggestion that we do also give. The only concern is if you as you rightly said that if it's a 50% equity and 50% debt then that scheme by itself is categorized as a debt fund for taxation purposes. So even if you're investing 50% in equity the taxation where the tax will be levied as, as if it is a debt fund. So, uh, you know, what is important is not only look at uh, asset allocation, you also have to look at your time horizon. What happens is I really don't know how long does he want yeah. to stay invested. In case he's okay to stay invested for more than 10 years, then there is a market volatility which he can mitigate in the form of an SIP. So if you're doing an SIP, you mitigate the market volatility. So your fears of volatility are kind of, you know, addressed to a yeah. certain extent. Uh, on the other hand, as you mentioned, the balance funds would have a minimum exposure of 65% in equity only so that it is, in a, it is called an equity fund from a taxation perspective. If after all this, you still want to allocate only a 50-50 equally, mm -hmm. I'd recommend that you do not take one scheme together. Invest a 50% into equities so that at least that 50% you will get the tax benefits of an equity fund. The other 50% you choose a debt fund itself so the taxation will be on a debt side. Or else you have a choice to take a uh, you know, hybrid fund which is 65% minimum in equity so that uh, you, know, the beneficial, you can get the benefits of an uh, equity taxation. In any case, so this I'm, I'm assuming that he may not have got all his answers that he was uh, looking for. What I recommend because you're a new investor, unlike Charmi where we were suggesting her yeah. to go on her own, in this case you should take advice of a financial advisor. Understand what are the different you know, aspects of dividing this portfolio either directly into equity funds and debt funds or a combination with a minimum of 65% in equity. So these things you should possibly sit down with an advisor and you know talk it out and sort it out for yourself before you start investing. Yeah and you know uh, Harsh there are two more uh, parts actually to his query. One is that he says um, uh, is it possible to put lump sum amount without a fixed schedule? So he's also contemplating whether or not he should go down the SIP route or the lump sum route and secondly he wants to know if there are any terms or conditions which are important before buying into a mutual fund so I think both of these go hand in hand but any words from the wise about why an SIP matters I mean at least for a new investor absolutely because uh, see what happens is a lump sum is when you invest the entire amount that you have with you in your hand which you put a pocket and yeah. invest it either in equity or debt SIP is that you do not want to time the market, mm -hmm. uh, you do not want to you know, take the risk of the entire capital and another part would be that you do not have the capital in your mm -hmm. hand right now. When you get a salary or something which is coming every month, you would invest it every month. So this is the you know, sense as to why a person does an SIP mm -hmm. or and why a person does a lump sum. Well, if you've opened a folio with a lump sum investment, that's his actual question. Mm -hmm. He says that if I can, can I make yeah. lump sum investments regularly? Yeah. Yes, of course you can do that. What you do is the first time when you make an investment, you'll get a folio created for yourself. And in that same folio, as in when you have liquidity, as in when the money comes into your hand, you can start investing in that folio. And there is no fixed amount. Say, first time when you started, you invested with 50,000 mm. rupees. The next time, you can do as little as 5,000. The third time, you can do a 7,000, and you can do a 7 lakh in the fourth time. So there is no fixed The third time, you can do a 7,000, and you can do a 7 lakh in the fourth time. So there is no fixed amount in that case, uh, which you can do. Now, the question also arises, uh, you know, how do you go about investing? So that is why I summed it up to say that because he has so many questions, which are so so many moving yeah. parts, he's just trying to figure out and trying to understand mutual funds. My suggestion to you is that meet somebody in person, mm. you know, because you, there are lots of things that you would need to look at and understand before you start investing in mutual funds. So just try and understand first, get your uh, you know basics right as to what do you want to do, how you want to go about doing it, and a financial advisor would be a best person to guide you through this process. Um, our show is also live on Facebook, and we're getting a live query coming in from there, Raj. Rajesh Gowda has written in to us. He wants to know which is the best category of fund to park emergency money. And in that particular category, he wants to know which fund he could choose. Uh, so, Harsh, this is a question that we've also uh, received quite often, actually, from a few view uh, viewers who've taken out money for a certain allocation. But, uh, you know, since that gets deferred a little bit, they don't know what to do with it for, say, a period of sometimes 10 days, 15 days, going up to a month. Uh, so in this case, would you suggest some sort of a liquid fund would be the best bet? Absolutely. So, Samara, there would be two options. One is that you have money lying in your bank account. You don't really know when do you need it, but you don't need it in the immediate future. So you don't want to earn a 4% uh, return that your bank gives you or a 3.5% mm. that the bank gives you. What you could do in the first instance is if you know exactly how much time you don't need it for, say you 15 days or 30 days, the, at least the least you could do is move this money from a savings account into an FD with the same bank for a 15 days or a 30 days. Mm -hmm. You'll get slightly more than what your savings bank account gives you. 
Alternatively, if you're equipped, you have a folio created and you're equipped for the KYC things to be done, a liquid fund or a short-term debt fund, these are most appropriate for these kind of uh, you know, power, you know, allocation of money because they don't have a timeline. The moment you park your money, or gen you start generating returns for the number of days that you are invested. And they, because they are uh, short-term debt funds or they are liquid funds, they do not have exposure to long duration papers as well. So mm -hmm. the volatility is far, far less in this. The sense is that you, you can withdraw the money if you wish anytime. And until you're invested, you will get returns which are potentially higher than a savings bank account. And uh, the liquidity in this perspective is that if you give a redemption request before 3 p.m., you will get your money next in your bank account. So it's as uh, simple as that and uh, you know you could just park your money, leave it as long as you don't need it and then take it out in a day's notice. All right, up next uh, we have a query coming in from Remya Menon. She wants to invest 10 lakh rupees uh, via SIP in good dividend uh, giving funds and wants to know which funds to invest in. Now, Harsh, this becomes a tricky question because uh, one, I don't know how she's planning to stagger this 10 lakh rupees in a SIP. Uh, second is, um, you know, post this whole SEBI rejig, I don't know if there is a good dividend uh, fund in the mutual fund category. So what would you say? No, in fact... I mean, uh, apart from arbitrage funds, what would... No, so in fact, uh, you know, what I understand from this, there are two elements. One is that you're looking at an uh, option to invest, uh, which is giving out dividends to you. Hmm. Okay, or the other, if I understand correctly, she might also want to pick a dividend yield fund. So okay. basically, these are equity yeah. schemes in which the stock selection which are is yielding stocks, yeah. right. so which are which are investing into stocks which are uh, mm. you know which have a good track record of giving out dividends to shareholders mm. now there's a good strategy quite often you know i mean because if you're choosing a dividend yield fund you essentially are investing into companies which have a good dividend payout ratios now when you talk about companies which have paying out dividend it essentially also translates to say that these companies have been earning profits Mm. Only then would you give out dividends, right? So is, your, your stock selection narrows down to saying that I'm investing in companies which are profitable, which have been rewarding shareholders in the form of dividends. So if that is your strategy, well, you could definitely, I can give you three schemes because you're going to invest 10 lakhs. You may want to invest and split it into three companies. A, div a UTI dividend yield fund, a Birla dividend yield fund, and an ICSA dividend yield equity fund. These are the three options that you can split your money into and invest into these. In case you're looking at any options which only gives out dividends, then you'll have to first identify what is the time horizon you're investing for. Because if you're investing for a short period of time, then it will be liquid funds. If you're investing for a longer period of time, you could go for equity schemes with a dividend payout as an option. All right, uh, we have another live query coming in on Facebook. This time, Sadesh Kulkarni has written in to us wanting to know the future of Franklin's latest NFO. So I'm checking on the Amphi side, and uh, that uh, information is also uh, going up on uh, our screens as well. Uh, Franklin has a fixed maturity plan, an FMP, right? Series 4 Plan C, which is a thousand and ninety eight days okay uh, it's a close-ended fund uh, and the NFO closes on the 28th of August um, Harsh yeah so if you're looking at uh, fixed maturity plans the essence of a fixed maturity plan is that they will invest into papers they are debt funds they will invest into papers with a maturity of hundred one thousand ninety eight days so the maturity of that paper which they're investing into matches with the duration of the fund so in, in, in a sense, you will not have that volatility re re regarding the interest rate. If the interest rates go up, you know, you'll have NAV fluctuations. That doesn't really affect you in this particular case. So when you're looking at an interest rate scenario, which is, you know, reasonably high at this juncture, and you want to park your money with this kind of, and lock in your benefits over three years, well, you can consider investing into these. And uh, there's not much to actually evaluate and, you know, dissect yeah. into the scheme like this. It's more to do with the fact that you're going to park your money for three years mm. and you will lock in the interest rates which are available today in the market. And then you're not affected by the fluctuations in the interest rates in the next three years. All right, so Sudesh, I hope that answers your question as well. We'll take a very quick break, but when we come back, it'll be back to markets and lots more stock-specific action. Harshwardhan, thanks very much for your time this afternoon. My pleasure. Some of the mutual fund queries that our expert answered, but meanwhile, uh, not much changed in the market. Actually, we are still absolutely flat for the Nifty and the Sensex. Individual stocks, they are moving and how. JP Associates, that one should come up for you. A sharp 9% spike, most of that come by on that stock just in the last five odd minutes. So JP Associates is the stock that should come on your screen right now. Up around 10%. Not sure whether it's backed by some news or anticipation of some news, but that stock has moved. Apart from that, we have a couple of these other stocks, IDBI Bank and Tata Alexi moving higher as well.